Booker uses the screen beautifully and flushes Devin Booker. Aggressively attacks the rim. Phoenix Suns, for the first time in 28 years, are going back to the NBA Finals. Suns in one, two, three, four, five, six. It wasn't Suns in four, but you know what? Who cares? It's been 28 years and the Valley Boys are back. Now, what's the significance of the point god reaching the NBA Finals for the first time? We're going to break that down as well. Love that Photoshop. A huge game five tonight in Milwaukee. Who's going to be playing? What adjustments can the Bucks make? We will break all of that down. So dance like millions of people are watching Steve Ballmer or do whatever that was because the jump starts now. I want the mask off just so I can see Ballmer's like, what? That That's the, that was yelling. I want to see Ballmer's <laughs> facial expressions there. He was so happy. It was so much fun to be around. One of the things I say all the time about sports is you get to like be there for scheduled joy. Yes. Right? You get 20,000 people in an arena all at once or, that you know. Or scheduled misery. Well, yes, either one. <laughs> <laughs> But that's pretty cool. All right, welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols, joined in here by, by our NBA champ in L.A., Richard Jefferson, our NBA champ in Texas, Kendrick Perkins. We're going to get into the huge Eastern Conference Finals game today, just a little later in the show. But first, I want to talk about the Phoenix Suns, who are headed to the NBA Finals for the first time since Charles Barkley squared off with Michael Jordan in 1993. Chris Paul dropping 41 points in the series-clinching win. Headed to the NBA Finals for the first time in his 16-year career. He was part of a very excited Suns group after the win last night. Take a listen. That's your journey. But it's hard to describe it in the moment. You're just grateful for um, being in these moments with, with people you're with every single day. And um, thankful for your family. Thankful for, again, the people you work with. Thankful for the fans that travel. And... Um, to be able to win a game like that is huge for the organization, the city. I know people say, you know, live in the moment, but that moment was too long, man. That almost felt unreal. I was like, is this too good to be true? I was like, I'm in this for too long now. But, you know, it's life, and, you know, we just got to enjoy this night, get back in the lab, and get ready for the finals. It was so much fun. I. I I can't, i just going to keep saying it. I loved it. I loved just the energy, the joy on the court in that moment. Um, and look, prior to CP3's great performance last night, somebody predicted some of it. Let's take a little listen to what Richard Jefferson had to say. Do what you've always done. Get everybody involved. Pick your moments and then come fourth quarter. Go be the Chris Paul that you've been all season, that you've been all over your career. That's your moment because once you've established everybody else, that lane opens up for you to do your work. That should be his formula to go dominate that game. Aw. So no, look, no, and by the way, got every people involved early and then stepped on the gas himself late in the game. Richard, that was lovely. Good. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I appreciate our, our, our producer, Steve playing that clip, but I really wanted people to see the clip of Kendrick Perkins telling me I was wrong. He was like, you're wrong. If he's going to do that, now look, look, he got the scowl, his, I started getting all scrunched up over there, everybody. Because that's what he said. He said I was wrong. And this is why what was so impressive with Chris Paul, when he's really dominant, when Chris Paul is at his best, he is one of the best fourth quarter finishers. If Chris Paul goes out there and is like, I'm going to try and score 40, it's like, no, Chris, you got to get those guys involved. And then go do what you've always done and be one of the most <laughs> Clutch, intense players in the fourth quarter, and he did it perfectly. I'm not saying he listened to me, but maybe he heard me. Perk, what do you think the significance is of Chris Paul making his first trip to the NBA Finals? Well, well, Rachel, I think it's everything, but can I can I address <laughs> Richard for a second? Numbers on the house, Perk, go do it. Yeah, please, because first of all, look, Richard, you wasn't wrong for us the aspect of Chris Paul taking over the game late because he did just that, right? But at the beginning of the game, if you were actually watching the game, the Clippers were in the zone. So it wasn't like he was running high pick and roll and dissecting the uh, the defense. They actually was punching it in to DeAndre Ayton in the paint because the Clippers were small. And it was coming from everybody. It wasn't just Chris Paul. I literally just said get mate. everyone you know, involved. Can, can I finish? Can I finish? The Chris Paul that I witnessed last night, I saw him coming out actually searching for his shot. But I saw Devin Booker. I saw Mikael Bridges. I saw Jay Crowder actually making the emphasis emphasis to get the ball in the middle to DeAndre Ayton. And they got out of the zone 
in the second half. Now CP3 was bringing Big Cousins up in the high pick and roll and dissecting him. That's how he was able to get downhill. You can fool everybody else with you that. Could, you, you, can answer, you can me. answer the question. The significance of Chris Paul's first uh, like you answer, Like you answered the question. Yeah. That, 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 that's no, not, you, that's not what we're talking about. You know what? It, it was everything. It was everything. You know why? Here's why. Because it's not what you do. It's how you do it. And the fashion that he did it in, I'm going back all the way to the start of this offseason. When he was with the Thunder, right? He had a choice. I'm pretty sure him and Sam Presti sat down. He could have negotiated a buyout. He could have went joined the team like the Lakers or anybody else that were favored as a contender to go and try to chase a ring. No, he didn't shortcut it. He went to the Phoenix Suns where they had young a young core, where they drafted players, and he went got it in the trenches. He went got it out the mud. He didn't shortcut the grind. This is why I appreciate this so much more than any other run by any other superstar because he didn't. Well, it's interesting when you look at his career and how it maps out. Out, right, we have a we have a list of sort of his accolades, and you can argue who's a quote better player or who's, but you can just look at more accomplished, right? Yeah. Just look at the actual numbers of mm. his All NBA selections, his All Star appearances, his assist career rank, his steals career rank, and this is again in the entire NBA history, he is fifth overall. So you can very easily say he is the most accomplished player to have never been in a finals before. And for me, this was amazing, by the way. This was the scene. <laughs> now, guys, in now, now, guys, I, this is where I oh. get this is where I get old man grumpy. You're not done. I understand Bro, this. I know, I know. I'm not. This is not. For, this is the thing. Giving some joy. Some, giving you are the, being upset. That, you want to tamp down. I'm joy. not. No, 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 no. I just know that first time my rookie year we went to the finals. This is what it was like. Second time, and we lost. Second time we go to the finals. It's like no. There's no parties. Um, there's no sorry, drinking. I'm sorry. What? So the second time you went to the finals, you weren't like that. You weren't reveling yes, in yeah, it. You weren't doing the parties. And what happened, Richard? Yeah, I understand we lost, but there's a level of focus. We did better. We did better in the you second final. We lost finals. by less. We did, we did better. We did <laughs> better. We're still the greatest let, Nets team of all time. Hey, man, let, let these guys. <laughs> Barely. Just, like, just a joke. Let these guys in, have, have their moment, man. I, I'm, like, oh. Let these guys you know have their moment. That would worry me. That that pseudo parade would worry me if the NBA finals started tomorrow, but they don't. They don't. Eastern Conference finals are way behind this series, right? They are playing their fifth game tonight and the score is 2-2. So we know that the Eastern Conference finals will go to six games at least, and then there will be a couple days until the NBA finals start. So I am okay with them having a nice moment with their just, fans because they can do it in their own just building. Just stay hungry. That's all I'm saying. They got five stay, more days to stay, stay hungry, stay, if stay, not stay more. Stay hungry so. and grumpy. We'll, we'll, we'll do. I, the only thing thing I want to say about Chris Paul is this. One of the reasons I have liked covering and watching Chris Paul for his whole career beyond just the magic he does on the court is he is a scrapper, right? He is a smaller guy who has had to get into the NBA and be the point god that he is by scrapping, by being competitive for every single inch, by working. This was not just God gave him the talent and body to be an NBA star. He put himself in the NBA. And the fact that he showed that same scrappiness, that same determination when a lot of people left him pretty much for dead when he was traded from Houston to Oklahoma City, the bright new shiny light that was shining in Houston with Russell Westbrook and James Harden. And here goes Chris Paul to this sort of NBA rebuilding wasteland. And that's not an out, uh, a knock on Oklahoma City. It's what Oklahoma City has set out to do. It is their intention. Mm -hmm. People thought, oh, well, OK, he's going to just be hurt a lot. And we know this is the end of Chris Paul's career. And he scrapped his way to the NBA finals. And I have such admiration for that. Um, I just I think it's a life the significant the significance for me of Chris Paul getting to the NBA finals is the larger life lesson about how it's a long, long life. Did she answer the question? And you, have, <laughs> you have opportunities beyond what happens to you in that one moment. As for the Clippers, let's talk about their side of the ball. They reached the conference finals for the first time in franchise history. Right. And they did so without Kawhi Leonard since the middle of the second round. Here is Paul George on what he thinks would have happened if Kawhi was healthy. Oh, we would, <clears throat> we would be going on. Uh, you know, this series would have been a lot different. Uh, talk about one of the best players in the league uh, being out. Uh, yet we were, you know, inches uh, you know, a away from getting to the next round. So um, definitely it's a, it's a what if. So, Perk, I want to just say, 
He was asked the question. He didn't start well, this on his own. He was asked how would things be different if Kawhi had been there. So please, what do you think of that response? Well, I mean, he's supposed to say that, but at the end of the day, didn't the Clippers just beat the Utah Jazz, the number one seed, the team that had the overall best record in the NBA, one of the dark horses that could have came out of the Western Conference. So you got to, without Kawhi, I mean, I know Kawhi Well, he played half of that series, so they did have him for a couple of those wins. That's what I'm saying, but we could say, I mean, the Phoenix Suns didn't have Chris Paul in Mm -hmm. the the first two games of the series. They could have capitalized on that moment. Uh, The Clippers could have, but they didn't. So then, look, we're not about to sit up here and do this at all. And I and I get it. Paul George was asked the question, but he had a chance to seize the moment. He had a chance to go up on this series. And by the way, Chris Paul just got back into round form last night. He was in COVID protocol. Mm-hmm. He had COVID. And Rachel, you covered a lot of people yep. that dealt with COVID, from Jason Tatum to Dennis Schroeder to a lot of people that said, we don't, sometimes we just don't feel right. Yep. And at the end of the day, I just feel like Paul George and the Clippers missed the golden opportunity while CP3 was out to capitalize and take full control over this series. So I don't know if Kawhi was healthy that the Clippers would have beat Phoenix in this series. And, and again, like, like Perk said, I believe that he believes this. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There's probably five or six other teams that believe if they were healthy, let's say, a la the the Brooklyn Nets, maybe the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of teams that believe if they were to be 100% healthy, that their approach and and the the way the finals are, are, the way this postseason would have played out, would be completely different. I do like his approach. Unfortunately, inside the basketball community, you're looking back at some last year's past success. This was our past last year past failures. This year was all about what Paul George was able to do. Paul George was able to elevate himself to be like, Mm -hmm. okay, that's one of the top 10 players in the league. You can see it. He's doing it night in, night out. He's doing it. So there was positivity gain. Do I think that they would be in the finals without Kawhi or if they had Kawhi? They gave him more room for error because don't forget, they were two free throws away from most likely being uh, like having three wins. Or, like, that's what I'm saying. There were multiple mistakes away. But when you have great players, <laughs> it gives you more room for error. Ew. That was the only thing I picked up on that. But at the end of the day, I ain't going to question Paul George. Mm-mm. And by the way, that was his point a little bit about we were inches away. That's what he was talking about was that game two in Phoenix. And look, in the in the micro for Paul George, these playoffs without Kawhi, the section without Kawhi actually lifted him up. Yes, it did. He lifted mm-hmm. his game. He elevated, as you said, Richard, and it lifted everyone else's opinion of him along with it. I do know that Paul George would trade all of that for having Kawhi by his side and feeling like he had a better chance to reach the finals himself. It is kind of what he's supposed to say, though. Okay. All right, coming up, the NCAA is USA Basketball Managing Director Jerry Colangelo told ESPN's Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin yesterday he doesn't expect LeBron to play for Team USA anymore. Colangelo said he put in his time, he made a contribution that is appreciated, but I think his time is over. Perk, is this what you expected at age 36 for LeBron? I mean, he's, no, I don't. I look, it's over with. At the end of the day, we already know that LeBron James is the ultimate family man. He wants to be at Bronny AAU games. He wants to be watching Bryce. He has nothing to prove. And if we want to continue to see LeBron James play NBA basketball, then I would, would consider him missing the Olympics. Now, now, I, the Olympics, yes, because the next Olympics is probably in four years. But uh, like now, I love our, our three years. I, I, I love Jerry Colangelo. He was the original one of the original owners of the Phoenix Suns. Like I grew up with him and them. But I'll say this, Jerry, it's not up to you. It's not up to you, Jerry. It's up you to You think Bron. just general team USA, though. Bron, Bron will let Bron drive by and then point it. I want to like, get to this tweet. Patrick just tweeted this recently. He says, CP3, emotions got the best of me last night. Uh, last uh, night, gang? I- I'm sorry. I thought that's a game, but it does not. My bad wasn't meant for you. Who was he aiming for? Congrats <laughs> on making it to the finals. Best of luck. Who was it meant for? No, but see, so fine. no, but Patrick Beverly's one of those guys that's always like you hate to play against them, but you would love them on your team. Yes. I would say this. That moment, if you were on my team, I would look at you differently. We can't do that. That's not in the game. That's not cool. Like I love the agitator. I, I don't like it when you do too much, but I like the agitator. But in yeah. that moment, I'm glad he apologized. Pat Beverly is a person as an agitator has a ton of respect in this league. But once you go that way, that's more of a sucker move than it is anything.
I, it's a coward move. And look, mm -hmm. if you're going to dish it out, then you got to be able to take it. I was the guy that was banging down low. I used to throw elbows, and I, I got elbows thrown back at me. And look, this is part of it, but I, I just can't. I can't. I, I lost a lot of respect for Pat Bev after that play because he seemed like a kid that had been playing in the park and had been getting whooped for mm -hmm. us taking a beating and then all of a sudden he wanted to just pick a fight because he couldn't play no more. He couldn't stop CP3. This is not his emotions. Like talking about, he was, he was referring, talking about it wasn't meant for you. Who was it meant for? <laughs> well, and, and the, la the last thing I'll say is this, is that, Pat, the reason why I think I'm... I'm probably looking at you differently is because if a fight broke out if somebody turns around and does something because what you did it, that, should that, that could warrant an actual that There's that no could question. warrant and then all of a sudden the phoenix suns as you're congratulating them and saying the emotions got the back of them you could have affected their chance to win the, the to win the title because guys started throwing punches or Does went back at you about that in phoenix i just saying phoenix has had that moment before <laughs> sorry about the hip check robert ori um, I, I, will, I will say this. I believe it was Jay Crowder who, after the game, said of that moment, he says, that's when we knew we broke them. Mm. There you go. Let's mm. move on to some big news from the NCAA. According to our ESPN story from Dan Murphy, for the first time, all NCAA athletes are now able to make money from a wide variety of business ventures without losing their eligibility. NCAA athletes will be able to accept money from businesses in exchange for allowing the business to feature them in advertisement oh. or products. Athletes also will be allowed to use their own status as a college athlete to promote their own public appearances or companies for the first time. So, Richard, so, oh. you were a prominent student uh, I don't know if the quotes are around prominent this or warm, students this, this or warms athlete, my soul the, yeah so yeah okay Talk one about. let's establish this give Reggie Red Reggie Bush back his Heisman Amen. two let, let's reinstate let's oh, reinstate five, all the stuff with that five, five right? and there's probably a list why because the damn Supreme Court of the United States of America basically told you what you were doing was BS so all these penalties all of this disgrace that you put on these kids yep. let's take some of that back let's reinstate that because you know what you're looking for right now NCAA you're looking for some positivity you're looking for some positivity and just giving the kids what they rightfully deserve how about reinstating some yep. people that lost some things that had to face embarrassment because you guys were enforcing rules that the supreme court decided what? now this is my biggest concern mm -hmm. they spent so much time fighting it and they were so arrogant they could have just given them laptops mm -hmm. they wanted to go one more they wanted to go one more step that's for another time the one thing i will say is this now they're going to have to be reactionary they're now scrambling trying to figure out the rules and the systems and all that stuff they could have been working on this for years so good luck in cw LA. Mm. I, well, I, 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 look, I'm going to go another route and say it's about time, mm -hmm. right? Watching all these college coaches get 90 to $100 million deals, get signed to lifetime deals. And look, it's off the backs of these athletes. These athletes are the ones that's out there, uh, that's the product that's out there producing. So I'm happy that they have a chance to actually make some money. But you know what this also goes to show me is that the NCAA feels threatened, and I'm especially in the basketball world because we're seeing guys like Jalen Green go and make a half a million dollars and not going to college that went to the G League. We're seeing the overtime league that's starting up that's allowing high school players to go to another song of form a professional, a professional league where they get paid and still be able to go to the draft. And what we're witnessing right now is that Jalen Green is still going to be a high lottery pick, and he didn't go to college. He ended up going to make a half a million dollars. So in my opinion, they feel threatened. They hear the footsteps coming, and what they're trying to do is make sure that they're able to keep five-star and four-star recruits interested in coming to college. Well, look, they felt threatened, and guess what? Their hands still had to be forced. Yes. Not like they did this on their own. I mean, <laughs> I know that the there Supreme were some. Court. I know that there were some things, steps that they had started to take. But come on, all right, Perk and Richard, hold on, stick around. We're going to talk about the Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals a little later in the show. We will bring you back for that. However, we have a couple. Young is out, and Giannis is grabbing toward his left knee area. Oh my! The Eastern Conference Finals may see a gigantic turning point here. We got to do the little things. We got to turn their pressure against them. Keeping that pressure on these guys for 48 minutes. Here's Williams for three. Bounces it. it to the rim, turns and flushes. We just need to settle in a little bit. Open three. That's good. It's a 20 point Atlanta lead. Oh my, it's Atlanta's night. It was one of those nights. Everybody played with confidence. We were super confident, man. That's what it's all about.
Welcome back to The Jump. I am now joined by the 2021 Hall of Fame inductee, Chris Bosch, and our senior writer, not in the Hall of Fame, but maybe one day, Zach, the host <laughs> of the Low Post mm. podcast, Zach Lowe. All right, guys, the Bucks have announced that Giannis Antetokounmpo is out for tonight. But, Zach, yesterday you had some reporting on Giannis. Please tell us what you know. Yeah, he appears to have avoided serious knee injury. Uh, the ligaments appear mostly okay or totally okay. It's unclear now exactly what the condition of the knee is. They're being a little, as you can understand, secretive about the information. But they're very, very relieved inside the Bucks today that the worst has not happened. The knee appears structurally sound. And beyond that, we'll see about a timetable. But the number one emotion right now in Milwaukee is, whew, relief. All right. Well, Chris, you suffered a similar injury in your career yesterday. You weren't sure if Giannis would be back in these playoffs at all. Um, now that you've heard that there's no ligament damage, is there still anything about this particular injury that makes you be like, I don't know? What do you think? Well, I mean, you know, we just saw the highlight. It was uh, a pretty incredible injury, and I'm so ha happy that he isn't seriously, seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you have to deal with is those stretched ligaments. Mm -hmm. They might be bruised. They're probably not yep. torn, but they might be bruised. Yep. And most of all, the bone bruising. Um, that's one of the things that I had the most trouble with. Hmm. It gives you the most pain because, as you can see, when he kind of hyperextends that knee, yep. those two bones on, on the other side, you know, on the sides of your kneecap, well, they bang together mm -hmm. and they bruise. And so that's where you're going to get most of your pain. That's probably going to prohibit him from being able to be explosive and even get up and down the court. What do you think? Uh, look, I was going to ask Zach's opinion on that, but you have not had that knee injury. So I'm just going to go. Zach, <laughs> <laughs> no. given that and, and given sort of where they hang in the balance right now, you know, does, is there a point where you feel like Giannis has to come back to make this a competitive series for the Bucks, Or do you feel like if he cannot play the rest of the series or maybe even beyond that, as Chris is concerned with, how far do you think the Bucks can go? I think they can win this series without him. And that's different Atlanta fans than saying they will win this series without him. But the Hawks just proved last game, you can lose your best player. All these other guys are good NBA players. They can step up. You can kind of take on a different look and ride that for a game or two. They still have Chris Middleton. They still have Drew Holiday. They have home court advantage. I would give them a better than 50-50 chance of winning the series, even if he doesn't come back. And we'll see what happens in terms of his injury. I mean, this is one of those things where he's in the prime of his career. Chris can tell you, you only get so many shots at it in your prime or ever in your career. But, but you can't jeopardize your long-term health, right? Well, Chris had a stretch where he got a, a ton of shots at it, but that's a whole different, whole different subject. <laughs> I want to get over to the Western Conference on their side. The Clippers lost last night, of course, and Marcus Morris said afterward, he is confident Kawhi Leonard is coming back to L.A. next season. Chris, reminder here, Kawhi has an opt-out in his contract. It's a player option. Now, even if he exercises that option, it could just be to get a different contract. He could stay with the Clippers even if he exercises this option. Do you expect him to be back in that L.A. Clipper uniform next season? I expect him to. Um, you, you know, they have a fantastic team. Um, it's the reason why he was there. They orchestrated um, trying to put this team together, and you don't just give up after two years. And... I'm sure Kawhi feels, as Paul George said last night, um, they have supreme confidence that if he would have been healthy, they would be going to the, um, hopefully to the finals right now. But, you know, I, I think with the pieces that they have, um, bringing Kawhi back, um, um, having Morris, um, having playoff P, I, I think, you know, you give yourself the best chance just coming back, running it back, making sure you get that team as best as, you know, in, in a better position hopefully pick up a couple uh, pieces, uh, maybe a couple second round draft picks and, and, and yeah, run it back. I mean, they were so close, but just more importantly, just to see, uh, for everyone to see uh, Paul George elevate his game to what we thought and what we know he can do, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that's pretty promising for the organization. I'm pretty sure it's promising for Kawhi. And hey, let's be frank, you know, we can look at other teams, but they have a pretty good situation going there. You run it back. Back. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I'll say this. I mean, I'll, I'll try to prove a positive by stating a negative. I haven't heard one thing of concern or indication that Kawhi Leonard is leaving L.A. Now, it's not like I'm tied into Kawhi's camp, 
But from any team in the league, I have not heard an iota of worry, anxiety that he's leaving the Clippers. And I agree with Chris. The Clippers, look, they didn't make the finals, but they at least quieted the noise. Next season, there's not going to be this drumbeat of what if they fail? What if they fail? What if Paul George fails? What if we get way off P and pandemic P again? They got to the conference finals. They didn't win, but they got there. And they got there in tough fashion, winning twice against Utah without Kawhi. I think they could go into next season with a cleaner, slate a calmer environment around them and say you know what we might have it we found something in terrence Mann, and we might get ibaka back if we resign him we'll see what happens with jackson and batum but we've got something going here and we can kind of go into it with a little bit of more calm around us i would expect reggie jackson to stay in that clippers uniform he had a great quote Absolutely. last night he said he walked into the locker room and told the guys thank you for saving me just really emotional there. You could see he had been crying from the redness in his eyes and seeing the bond between Reggie and Paul George, who have been friends for a decade and consider each other some of their best friends in basketball. Uh, that bond really translated out onto the court, and I expect him to stick around as well. All right, guys, stick with us, because coming up, we're going to talk about how... All right, so the Warriors own two lottery picks with the number 7 and 14 in this year's draft. It's not often an NBA team in that situation can call itself a championship contender like the Warriors are. Zach, how should Golden State approach this draft in terms of trading or making the picks? Well, Steph Curry reminded everyone, uh, I'm still Steph Curry. I'm still the guy. And Klay Thompson <laughs> is coming back. And I think you it behooves you to say we got to win right now. We owe it to Steph Curry to try to win right now. So that means you look around. What can I get for 714 Wiseman if it gets to that? The problem is I'm not sure what veteran is out there for them. And if they can't find anything, guess what you do? Take players who are young but might be able to play in a finals game next year. What do you think, Chris? I think this is the dream position if you're uh, an organization and a GM, um, you know, they've got high picks. I, I truly believe in Wiseman. Um, all he has to do is set screens for Clay and Steph and roll and he'll be open all next season. Um, they have a very dynamic group of young players. You know, they just have to really enjoy the situation that they're in right now. I would say that they need to upgrade on the wings for that three and D position. But if they can find someone in the draft to fit that, great. If they can package it up, they're in the driver's seat. I'm definitely <laughs> on Steph timeline watch as opposed to development watch. That's just my personal opinion. Let's start with you. Are those fair expectations? Uh, there are fair expectations, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be that easy. You think the East is easy, but who in the top eight is like a guarantee to fall out next season? Nobody. You got Chicago, you know they're going for it. Charlotte, you know they're going for it. Toronto has the number four pick. We'll see what happens with Kyle Lowry. But you don't look at the East as like, oh, it's just a cakewalk for the Pacers, as talented as they are. And they are talented, and Rick Carlisle's a great coach. It's not like a no-brainer for them to be in the playoffs next year. Hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, they're definitely going to have uh, be more on the up and up this year, uh, especially with uh, Carlisle coming back. You know, he's has his own history, different hairdo back in the day, but <laughs> he definitely brought a lot of wins uh, to the Pacers. But, you know, I I'm sure that the Indiana fans are going to be super excited. They do have a great fan base. They have some great talent and they're just going to have to build around that guy right there. They're going to make sure that, uh, you know, they compete. And just like everyone says, I mean, if you're in the East, you have a little bit better of a shot. So they can probably put some things together. Look for them to be active in the trade market as well, because I believe they have some assets mm. and really just, you know, lead. Uh, Rick Carl will lead them uh, the way that a champion leads his team and we'll see what happens for him. I was trying to jog my memory. George Steinbrenner, Billy Martin, right? Am I thinking of, of the coach, the, the manager that just kept coming back and coming back and coming back <laughs> to the Yankees? That's what I think of when I see that old Rick Carlisle footage there. All right, what's that? Because I hear the coaching carousel still. Here it is. Here it is coming around again. Let's take a look at the vacancies still remaining. Still a handful, including for the Wizards after Scott Brooks' departure. Bradley Beal entering a contract year. That's important. Russ coming off a very strong second half of the season. So, Chris, how involved should the Wizards duo be in that coaching search? How involved should the Wizards involve these guys? Involved, involved, like that. Well, I mean, in any time. I mean, right, it's a delicate subject sometimes. Um, you kind of do have to, in my opinion, um, get some sort of direction from your players because it, I think that the Wizards have what it takes 
to really compete for a championship. I, I don't think it's um, any any question that with Russ and uh, with Bradley that they have tremendous talent. I think they need a head coach to come in there and really perform right away. And you want their attitudes good coming into training camp. You want their confidence. And I think sometimes, you know, their recommendation and their voices, I think they should be heard. Um, it's, you know, they, they can put themselves in a very strong position, um, really, like I said before, to compete for a championship in my mind. They're right there. Uh, if the Wizards front office is watching this and they just heard Chris Bosh say they can compete for a championship next year, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa next year? We're going to compete for a championship next year? Does Chris want to come but play? Look, the answer is, <laughs> the answer is uh, Brad, Bradley Beal should be, particularly Bradley Beal, if you want to keep him, he should be as involved as he wants to be. Some stars, they don't really want to be a part of the coaching process. They don't want that to be on them if it goes badly. They don't want to feel like they're responsible for whatever happens afterwards. Some stars really want to be. Depending on what Bradley Beal wants, he should be as involved as he would like to be because he's that important to the Wizards organization. He's the franchise guy. He's the guy who's got one guaranteed left year, uh, year left on his deal, I believe. He's the one that they're dying to keep there long term. So whatever he wants, that's what they should do. And, and look, to your point of some guys don't want that responsibility, if a guy does take that responsibility on, they're kind of invested in the choice then. And then if a few months down the road things aren't going great, management can say, well, you wanted this guy. Like, make it work. We can't just, you know throw out a new guy again so I think the teams now are understanding why that investment is valuable but again Bradley Beal contract year who knows what the Wizards are going to be doing at the middle point of next season as that trade deadline approaches and whether Brad Beal will say what he has said many many times which is I wanted to stay in DC I don't want to be traded or if things change by then there's a lot of teams around the league who would like to put Bradley Beal in their trade machines so we will see Zach, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. You will be back later in these playoffs. Come Richard Jefferson, that people want to watch Trey Young play the game of basketball than Giannis. He's more electrifying. Oh, I think He's they exciting. want to watch him. I don't know if it's more than Giannis, but yes, he is electrifying and exciting for sure. Yeah, Go no, ahead, Rachel. He's, he's, Go ahead, Rachel, he's, he's more fun to watch than Giannis. No, and if you're going to sit up here and debate me and tell me anything else differently, we're tripping. I would, oh, I oh. would never debate you, Perk. I know better. Come on. I can't throw out all of those phrases you do. I would lose in a heartbeat. Come on. I do want to ask no, you about the next jump ball, though. Yeah, okay, can, can we, we go get the, can we get the next? We got to move yeah, on. To, please. I'm, I'm Thank just you. saying you're right, Perk, and I'm moving on. That's it. I can't, I can't stand up to the withering perkisms. I can't do it. Richard, maybe I can't no, do don't, it. No, don't. Don't, um, don't try. Let's talk about Chris Middleton showing up. Is it going to be red hot game three, Chris Middleton, or game four, Chris Middleton? What do you got, Rich? We'll start with you. Well, this is my thing. I find it so disrespectful, and I find it so inappropriate that you would sit up here and ask me a question that Chris Middleton doesn't even know. <laughs> Chris Middleton doesn't even know which one's going like, to show up. I can't Bucks wait fans, to see Bucks where fans he's going with Bucks this. fans don't know, know which one's going to show up. That I don't know. Perk. Perk's going to Perk's going to say something. He don't know. Chris Middle. If Chris Middleton don't know which one's going to show up, how can I sit up here and tell you guys I think this Chris Middleton's going to show up? This was the fun thing about it. We're all going to watch and find out. Chris is going to well, play and find he, out. I, I think the game three, Chris Middleton is going to going to show up, and he showed us that last year in the bubble against the Heat when Giannis was injured. Look. Mike Budenholzer is going to put him in position to be successful. One thing I will say is don't allow him to run high pick and rolls because it's a disaster. I would ISO him at that, that wing area, feature him on a low block, having them come off of pin downs off of Brooke Lopez, things of that nature. Look, the whole offense is going to switch up because Giannis is out. Well, I want to get to the last jump ball before we go. Kendrick, who takes game five, Hawks or Bucks? Bucks. Bucks. What about you, Richard? Bucks. 